What's up everyone, my name is David Arroyo and in this video we're going to be talking about coloring line art. So if you are an aspiring concept artist or uh, you're into comics and you want to learn how to color comics, uh, this might be an interesting video for you. It's a quite long video so I've divided it into different sections. What you can do is uh, click on the different sections or in the descriptions you can see what, um, you know, what theme or what topic uh, interests you and just jump straight uh, into it because it's the longest video I've ever made. Um, so there's a lot of information in this video. Uh, so we are going to look at three different art styles. Uh, one, the very first one is for more for comic book colorists, but also a very good starting point for concept artists because it's a really good and very stable uh, way of coloring your artwork. Then the second one, uh, we're going to look at a art style where we get rid of the line art. And then the third one, uh, we're going to use a bit of a, like, just freedom, just free uh, painting and using a little bit of every trick in Photoshop that I use uh, in order to get to a final result. What do you say we dive right in and uh, have a look? Okay, so let's get started. Um, as mentioned uh, in the video, uh, I will be looking at different techniques. We're going to do one where uh, the character, uh, where well, well, we keep the line art for the character. This is more done like the way they do it in comic books. Then we're going to uh, look at one where um, we remove the line art. Um, and we uh, approach it like a digital painting uh, kind of way, and then maybe the third, just completely uh, focus on painting only, and then not worry too much about um, all the other things. So we'll see. I'll I'll see as as this goes. Um, and the most important thing is just to start showing things. Okay, so. Remember, this is for beginners, so if you are a concept artist in the making, or a comic book artist, or any of these things, uh, this is, um, yeah, this is the course for you, okay, or this is, this is a tutorial for you, uh, it can help you quite a lot. Okay, so, and this is all done in Photoshop, you can do something similar in Clip Studio Paint, uh, or in Procreate, it's perfectly possible, all these features, or at least the majority of them, uh, are in these three software packages. I'm going to do the demo in Photoshop and uh, let's get started. So I'm also going to explain always the um, shortcuts that I use so that you guys can uh, follow along. Okay, so this image that you're looking at right here, this is also available on my art station. You can download this exact same image from the art station. And so by the time, uh, if, if you were to use this as, as, a, as an image to practice on, uh, feel free, you just download it and open up your Photoshop, put it in here, uh, and then this is what you will see. Okay, so the link to the ArtStation link is in the descriptions below. Okay, uh, so you've opened up your Photoshop, you've, op you've brought in your own image, could be either this one or another very cool line art on the internet, there's plenty of them out there. Uh, that are just as cool if not cooler than this one. Uh, this one is made by me uh, and if you want to see how I drew this there's another video uh, that I'll add the link in the description below. I posted about a year before this one so then you can have a look at that as well. Uh, I also color uh, in there but that's with uh, digital watercolors and stuff like that on the uh, Procreate uh, app. All right so let's get started. So we're in Photoshop right now. This is what you'll see. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand or zoom this, um, my image. So I can do that simply by doing Command-0. On a Mac, it's Command-0. On a PC, Control-0. Okay, Control-0. Uh, the 0 that I pressed is the one on my numpad. Okay, if you have a QWERTY keyboard, this shouldn't be a problem. You can just press the 0 on your QWERTY keyboard at the top. Uh, but for Azerty keyboards, um, like in France or Belgium, um, there you might have to use the shift. Uh, so control shift zero, I think, I'm not sure. I use QWERTY myself, it's so much easier for all the other software packages. Okay, so with that said and done, let's uh, get started. So the very first thing we're gonna do is here under layers, right, you see that the layer is locked. Okay, so we're gonna unlock that. That's the very first thing. I'm gonna give my layer a name. I like to have structure, it's very important. So I'm gonna do this right now. Call it line art, okay? Now, I'm gonna create a new layer. You can do that by just pressing the plus sign here. Or uh, if you want a shortcut, 
that's control J or command J and you'll create a new layer. Um, right, so I'm gonna name this uh, flats. You'll understand why in a second. Uh, so I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna keep the line art at the top. Okay, so now if I were to draw on my flats anything, so I just grab anything and I just start drawing. See, I'm actually drawing, uh, you can't see it because, see, it's right there. The reason why you can't see it is because your line art is still put at normal. Okay, so you want to put that to multiply. Okay, that's very important. This is where you have your different type of layer types uh, or the way that, they, that, that the image looks. So you want to do that. I'm going to delete uh, everything that's on flat. So I do control A or command A and then I press the delete button or backspace. Um, now to deselect, I do control D or command D and it has been deselected. Okay, so now I'm going to start the flatting process. The flatting process is something that uh, comic book colorists do uh, in order to color their comics. Okay, it's the very first step in order to separate all the colors from each other and make very easy selections. So we're going to do this uh, for this particular um, job because it makes a lot of sense to use this technique. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I've selected this one, okay, my marquee selection tool. I'm going to go around it and see if I made a good square perfect. Going to do that and then I'm just going to fill it in with any color. It doesn't matter. Colors are not important at this point. Okay, so I go to my paint bucket tool. The shortcut key for that is letter G. I turn off anti-aliasing. Okay, very important. Uh, right now at this moment that is very important because um, or actually I'll show you in a second when, when I start making better selections. Just this is very important. So we do this first. I deselect by control D. I make another marquee selection right here. Try to stay inside the lines. If I want to remove something, I press the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac. And I can remove a little bit of the selection. So by holding your Option key, you see there will be a minus popping up on that crosshair. Um, okay, so that's that. I'm going to change this color to something like this. Press G for paint bucket and we put it in there. Okay, so I'm going to deselect. I'm going to take out the line art and this is what you'll be seeing. Okay, so that's perfect. Right, now what happens next is uh, we're going to go to the lasso tool or the letter L. We're going to take off anti-aliasing. This is extremely important. Do that right now. Okay, at least for these selections, it's very important to do this. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start from here. And I'm going to slowly select. This takes a little bit of time, so bear with me, please. And I'm selecting the line art. If your hand gets tired at any point in time, you can close the loop. Okay, so that's not a problem if you have to do that. I'm going to try to do as much as I can here. I'm going to close it now, uh, just like this. Okay, so I've closed this part. I'm going to press Shift on my keyboard, okay, to add to the selection. So I'm going to continue adding from the selection. I'm going to continue here at the top of his hair. I'm going to go down. I'm going to try to do this as good as I can. It's not always easy. Need a steady hand for this. The steadier your hand is, the better. Okay, and here I'm going to go outside of my square and just close it off, right? Okay, so I've now made the selection of this guy, okay? And I'm going to quickly, just any color, doesn't matter. The colors are not important right now. The only thing we're doing now is um, creating uh, selection. So we've got now uh, a selection of the character itself. Now, just to make my life a whole lot easier, I'm going to select the character again. So now if I wanted to select this character, it would make it very easy because when I zoom in, and this is very important, you see how these uh, squares are like super pixelated? That's exactly what I want. Okay, because that is exactly what allows me to make super clean selections. Okay, so now when I go to my magic wand tool and I put my tolerance to zero, okay, and I select here, it will select exactly that 
part that I need. Okay, so now I've got a selection of this flat. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a new layer, yeah, and call this, for example, character one. Character one, right? And I'll fill this in with just the same color. It doesn't really matter, um, but I'm going to do that. Okay, so now it's filled in there. I'm going to take off the, um, I'm actually going to lock this. I'm going to lock this one as well. So I'm going to lock this so I cannot do anything on the line art anymore, and I'm going to lock the character also. So I can do that here by locking the layer. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to my flats. And I'll tell you why later, because it's useful to have complete selections uh, for later if we wanted to do some quick modifications later. So you have to think about what I'm doing now as creating selections that later on I can easily select. That's basically all I'm doing. And if I'm seeing here, for example, in the hair, a piece that I don't want to be blue, for example, right? So say this part, then I can press G, press Option to select the color that I'm on. So see, it changes color as I move. So now green, and then I can either go over it like this, or another way of doing it is, well, this might be too small to see on a thingy. Another way of doing it is when you zoom in, for example, and under your brush, you take the pencil tool. The pencil tool is very it's pixelated okay so you won't get any anti-aliasing here so what you can do is quickly modify on the let me remove the character so you can't see it and i can quickly modify here take some of that off and say for example oh, i want to here hold the option key to change your color and then for example you can do uh, something like this option key again here and change it like that okay so this you can quickly do if you want to uh, fix a few of the edges that are not perfect, like for example here, right? If you want to make your brush smaller, you press the bracket key. So next to your enter key on your keyboard, there are brackets. Okay, the one, um, there's a bracket on the left and on the right. The one on the left will make your brush smaller. The one on the right will make it bigger. So if I press the bracket going up, see, you see how that circle just gets bigger and bigger? Um, so that's a very quick way to scale your brushes. Okay, so uh, let me quickly see. Everything here seems okay. Everything's fine. Yep, all happy. You don't have to be this precise, but I just want to show you that it's possible to do so. Command or Control-0 will bring you back to the center. Uh, okay, so we've got that done. We go back to our lasso tool or the letter L on your keyboard and this makes it quite easy so I just want to take out the hair right so I already have this selection so all I have to do I can start my selection here and then here go slowly slowly again around the hair I have to be very careful here once I'm here I can do that the reason being is because it will only take what it needs. So it, it, pretend that it's border. Okay. And if I say, okay, only color within the border. So there you go. So that's exactly what it's going to do. And if I do that now, you can see that right there. Right. So you always have to think a little bit about um, what do I need and how can I use it to my advantage. So we're going to do the same for the jacket or for the skin. Maybe we just want the skin. So what we can do is we go here and we can go here. The skin goes this way. This is part of the jacket still. Oh, somewhere here. I'm going to close the loop really quickly. So that I have to continue on this side really quickly. There we go. Here it doesn't matter because we already have a border for that. So technically right now if I were to just do this and close it here, maybe take this bit here. If I were to press the letter G for my paint bucket and just any random color I were to press here, it's only going to do the skin as expected. Okay, so that's quite important. So that's done. Control D or Command D to do the rest. Now for the jacket, we can make it ourselves very easy. There is a part of the jacket. Oh, and by the way, I just noticed that there's a part that I want to change or modify. I went out of it here. So Alt or Option key. 
and we're quickly just going to go over here a little bit with the pencil just to correct a few little things that I didn't do too well. Same here. So this process that we're doing now is called the flatting process. Okay, and this is extremely, extremely useful because, like I said, this allows me to create selections of colors that I can very, very quickly select afterwards. Um, and again, when you take out the line, the line art, it is extremely important to have jagged edges. Okay, they have to look like very rough squares like this. That's very important. Okay, all right, so putting the line art back. Uh, I'm quickly going to mask out this part now. So again, notice how I just can cut into the skin because that selection is already made. So that is, I don't have to make selections twice here as well. I can just go out and here. So that's basically part of the, it's not part of the jacket, but the inner section, if you will. And that goes up to here somewhere. And there you go, I cut back into the skin. And here, all I have to do is just take any color. Again, colors right now are not important. Right? So I'll just assign any color. I will change all this later. Okay. Now, the beard here, that part I do have to do. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. You can, for zooming, the uh, shortcut is letter uh, Z or Z. It's the last letter of the alphabet. Okay. So here, I'm quickly going to do the beard. Now this is something that the more you do it, the faster you get at flatting. So it takes a little bit of time at first, but don't worry, you'll get used to it. Here I'm just going to make my life a little bit easier and just select the same and just apply it there. I'm going to disconnect, I mean diselect the letter L for lassoing again. Just quickly going to do this. Just a little bit of that eyebrow. And I'm going to press shift or hold down shift so I can add to the selection on the other side. So as you've noticed, uh, yeah, this is a tutorial for beginners. Okay, so people that have done this many times, this is going to be pretty boring for you because you already should be knowing how to do this. But if this is new for you, then welcome. You're very welcome to stick around and learn how to do this. It's very useful and it's basically showing you a non-destructive way to get your art done. Uh, it's very useful, we'll see. Especially if you're starting off uh, into colors, this is a very, very safe way of doing it uh, because you have a lot of control over your work. Um, we're almost there. Okay, here for the eyeballs, I can just go around, do like this. I can clearly, as you've noticed, I can perfectly go outside. Okay, that makes no difference. That is perfectly fine. Okay, so here just any color will do, like I said, up. Okay, so we've got almost everything, at least the most important things, is lips. It's important to see this process uh, here for the lips. I'll just lower the color a little bit. There you go, just for now. Nothing too fancy. Uh, and we're almost there. And this little part here. And this one. And this one I'll go outside and do that. Just missed a little bit there. There we go, add here as well. Let's see, we'll do the same on this side. It's like uh, tattoos or something, like face tattoos. And we can do something very cool with them later on. Let's remove this tiny little bit here that doesn't need to be there. Right, so we've made that selection. We'll choose again another color. It doesn't matter which one. Like I said, for now, colors are not important. Right, the only thing is just to make selections. If I do a control zero and I do this, see, that's what you should be able to see. Right, so just 
very simple selections um, so that you can uh, say for example oh that's supposed to be that color that's supposed to be that color uh, and you have control over it to change it okay so here's the same thing right so this part for example I want this to have a specific color I can go out of it up to here that's like the zipper I can actually even go out of this here and just add this I like to go outside of the lines because then it means that when you fill up the color it will fill up all the way okay so it will take um, see all the way to the edge where the other connections are as well so that's the reason why I do that uh, let's see we have this part right here so flatting as you've noticed is maybe not the most exciting part right it's it's a part of, of coloring that you can yeah you know you can listen to a nice podcast or something or watch a YouTube video uh, well not watch because your eyes have to be on the screen here but listen to some music or something you know it's the part of the video that you can do slowly and taking your time without too much hassle. Again, I'll just add any color, any random color to this. Um, it doesn't really matter. Right now, here I'm going to quickly modify this a tiny bit. Make this a little bit like this. Okay, there we go. Uh, for now, I will keep it like this. Let me quickly zoom out. Do I have everything? I think so. I think I've got the flats done for this. More or less. Yeah, I got the most important part, so maybe I'll just section off this as well. Um, yeah, I think I'll section that off as well. So here again, make a quick selection up to here. Again, if your selections are not perfect, do not worry. These things can happen. Okay, it's not the end of the world. You can always still go in and fix what needs fixing, right? With the Alt or Option key pressed, you can continue adding, I mean, removing selections. And the same when you want to add, you just press the Shift key. So I'm doing that right now. All right, perfect. Press letter G really quickly. And again, random color, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just doing this to win time. Okay, I'm pretty sure that if I were to that's it see now that I have contiguous on um, it will only fill in this but if I were to take this off then it does both at the same time that's what I was trying to show you that's why that is useful uh, again let me take off the line art and there you go I think we are okay on that yeah I think so I think we can work with this okay so what we can do now, for example, now that we have our flats, and this is where it gets very interesting, is the letter uh, W, right, is your magic wand tool. If your tolerance is at zero, your anti-aliasing, everything is turned off, you can now very quickly select, for example, the individual colors that you had. So if I want to change, for example, the color of the hair, and now because it's not contiguous, for example, if I were to select the hair, it will only select the hair, here it will only select the beard. But if I turn this off, it will select every color um, on the skin or on the on the drawing that uh, every selection that has that drawing uh, that color. Okay, so let's quickly see how we can change colors. There are many different ways. I can, for example, change it here on the color wheel, press the letter G, and just fill it in. That's one way. But another way, which I I prefer to use, also, um, if you don't want to see the marching ants, you can press um, Control. H, okay, for hide, uh, or command H, okay, that, the, your selection is still there, uh, but it just takes the distraction away. So, now with the hair uh, and beard and eyebrow selected, I can do control U, or command U, and this will allow me to play here with the hue, saturation, and lightness. So if I want to change, for example, here, see, I can just go on this top slider, the hue slider, and that will change my color, right? So for example, I don't know, um, can work in that direction, we can give it a little bit more saturation, lower the lightness a little bit, and then we have something like a brown, 
Okay, for example, right? Press OK. Another way to do it is Control B or Command B, and then you can play with color balance, right? You've got your shadows, your midtones, and highlights. We're now in midtones. So if I change this, that means I add a little bit of red, I add a little bit of green, I add a little bit of yellow, or I add a little bit of blue. I can choose, and then when I press OK, um, you've changed the color balance, right? So we'll just uh, leave it as is, like this. Um, now press W to change the eye colors. Uh, Command U, and let's see if I can do something interesting here. I like to control H so that I don't see the marching ants because they can sometimes be annoying uh, and get in the way. Uh, let's see, maybe I can give him some cool like cybernetic type of colors. I don't know. Maybe I'm digging something like that. Right, so that's that. Then again, W, press this. Um, so W for the magic wand and then select all the yellows. Here I'm going to change that as well. I'm going to try and do something similar to the skin. So if I were to say, oops, option and select. So now I have the exact same skin color, but maybe I want to do something a little bit darker, right? Just for now. Um, and make it as if it were like, uh, yeah, just uh, some type of lighter tattoo on there. We'll, we'll look into that. What happens if I want to change the eyebrows only, right? So not just the whole hair. Again, that's where you tick contiguous. Um, and then you select one eyebrow, select the other. Say you want this darker, you can do that uh, by control U. And then the lightness, for example, you can bring that down. Um, or you can bring down the saturation if you don't want it to you know, want it to be a little bit less saturated, um, and then press OK, and then that's it. Control D for deselecting. Now, if I were to remove the line art, see, has different colors now. Right, um, same now for the jacket. So uh, I'm going to turn off contiguous, and then I select both blues in one go. I'm going to Command U again, and I'm going to see for, this is a very easy and quick way, by the way, just Control U, Command U on a Mac, it you know it immediately lets you see different colors, uh, which is very useful because it lets you brainstorm a little bit, it lets you get uh, a few cool ideas uh, at a early stage. And you're like, oh, okay, I like that, or I don't, uh, so and so forth and so forth. So you can do that quite quickly, and you can play with these sliders until you find something that you like. Okay, so I'm gonna go something like this maybe, give it a little bit more of this, maybe something like that, and then do the inside, W, and there you go, Control U, and let's see, here I'm gonna bring the saturation down considerably. That's a, an important tip, by the way. Um, learn how to select colors that are not too saturated. Control U so I don't see the marching ants. Uh, that really helps a lot, actually. Uh, it will make your work um, a lot more um, believable uh, because if you look around in the world, actually things are not that saturated. Um, so that's quite important. Uh, I now, because I remember I've got the selection, I have to do Control D. So don't panic if you're starting to draw a little bit and it's not happening. Just remember that you have selections and you have to Control D it sometimes. So here, for example, I'm going to select the color and with the pencil tool not the brush it's very important okay guys Pen this pencil and the brush are two different things I'm on the pencil tool right now that's for flatting uh, so that I can very quickly uh, change things on the go okay so that's that the last one is here control U again and see if I can also bring that down a little bit Let's see if there's a nice color that I'm willing to go with Bring the lightness down a little bit. Maybe I can bring it a little bit into that direction. And think a little bit about that. Make it dark like this, a little bit more. Maybe something like that. For now. Again, Control H helps you to uh, get rid of that distraction. And the last one is this pink here. Control U again. Uh, quickly check things that 
might go with this. Uh, maybe go for something. Let's see. Less saturated, less thingy. Something like this. I don't know. I'm just playing around a bit. Um, again, Control H makes it so much easier for me to focus on the actual color and not on the marching ants around it. I want to try and focus on something like this. And the thing is, all of this, you can change it at any point in time. I mean, you don't even have to worry too much about it. Okay, so you press OK, Control D or Command D to deselect. And I think we have a basis to work with. Okay, the background, again, you can also change that very quickly. It's just the same thing. Letter W to select the magic wand. Control H or Command H just to uh, remove the um, the marching ants. And here again, if you want a completely different background, uh, you can change that. You can modify it to whatever you see fit. Remove a little bit of the uh, saturation, like I said, and maybe something like that. Okay, so we've got now uh, something we can work with. Uh, I'll leave this like this for now, and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so what do we have now? We have selections for all these individual parts. We have a selection for the character. You know, what, if you want to select the entire character in one go, you can press Command or Control and click on the little icon here. Okay, so then you will select the whole thing. The same with the line art. If you want to select the line art, um, yeah, now because it's not a... Oops. Because it's not a... Um, a separate line art you can't do that but if this was separate line art you would be able to select the line art I'll show you later as we progress uh, let's just make sure we get past this part first so we've got the flatting pretty much done now we're gonna start looking into how to uh, add some lighting layers like some shadows and stuff like that okay so moving on we can uh, focus on the um, shadow layers or the um, lighting layers, right? So I'm going to start with shadows. Very easy. I've just made a new layer, okay? By again, you can press down at the plus sign and then you get a new layer. Always name your layers, okay? So I'm going to call these shadows. And this is where it's useful to have that selection of that character, right? Because now I can control select this one. So I hold control or command on a Mac and I just press on that little square here in your layers, okay, so the preview, and that selects my layer, basically. Now I go to shadows, and I'm going to add a color, okay. Most of the time, what you want to do with shadows, this is not always, this is not a rule, but this helps, okay, uh, is to choose a cold color, okay, like shadows tend to be cold, so like a bluish something, right, and you press G, and you go over it, you go over the whole thing, right, deselect, control D or command D, and this is now our shadows, okay? Now, of course, they don't look right now. That's because we have to change this from a normal to a multiply. Okay, so we start with that. And the opacity, we can choose how strong of shadows that we want. Okay, so now everything is completely, um, like the character is completely in shadows now. Okay, so now with this done, okay, now we can choose where to let the light shine. Okay, so we're going to turn on some lights, and we do that by going to, not pencil, but brush tool, for example. Uh, or in this case, actually, the um, eraser tool. That's the letter E. And we choose a brush that we like to work with for the lighting. Okay, so we can do something like a hard round pressure size, for example. And the way that works, or the way this technique works, is just to make a decision and say, okay, the light is coming, for example from the left, the right, you know, one of the sides. Let's start with this one. Okay, so we've got our shadows now. And all I have to do is start, like for example, if I were to say, okay, so all this is lit, right? So I, I increase my brush size and I say, for example, and all this is lit. And be careful with the ear here because the ear uh, will be quite important to get right. Uh, so, but let's say something like that. So all this, this is all lit. So try to, you can do it either like this, or if you want to be very, very clean, you make a selection, okay? Like with a lasso tool. 
Okay, that's that's the cleanest way of doing it. Okay, this I'm just showing you a easy and fast way, which is this one. Um, the more you know how anatomy works, like the human anatomy, the easier this will be. So just so that you know, I'm not drawing right now. I'm using the eraser tool, and I'm just taking away the areas where um, the color, uh, I mean, where the light shines. If I want to bring it back, I just press the letter B for brush. I still have the same color. That's very important. I need the same color of the shadows, and I just go back over it like this, for example, right? Um, and then here, for example, I can say, okay, that this part, for example, is dark. That part is light. So press letter E to erase again. Um, just try to make sure that you have the same brush on your eraser than on your uh, brush. Okay, that's quite important to get the same type of results. Okay, so here's the same. If I say something like, okay, I want this to be like this, for example, you can do that. Okay, now I'm going to continue erasing. So I'm going to say, for example, okay, well, I know that this part of the nose will be, I mean, there's, there's going to be lighting there. So I can take some of that out. Right, I can do the same here, basically, because, you know, this tends to happen normally. And it depends literally where the light is. Okay, so this will, I mean, if you do a little bit more like this, for example, you can play around and you can say there's a second light, uh, light source and then you can start playing around with this type of stuff, for example. Um, see, this is for you really to, to, to discover. And actually, sorry, it's starting from here because the cheek goes down. Um, and then you press the letter B, for example, to say, okay, this goes up to here, for example. Um, so you can play around with many different setups. Okay, so the easiest one is just to do something like this, not to complicate it, uh, that will allow you to uh, play around with just a, a side uh, view, right? Just some lighting on the side and do some stuff here. Press the letter B. Uh, get this out of the way like so and uh, maybe here a little bit on the beard right uh, notice that it doesn't matter where your um, you know what color you are right you can just do this all in one go uh, and just get it all uh, organized in one go so because you're just erasing shadows that's basically all you're doing and here for example the jacket is facing away so you just have to think a little bit about okay how is this, um, like, where is it facing, and is there any type of lighting that would be hitting it, right? So here, for example, on this side, um, we've got a little bit here, and then we can uh, do a little bit here, for example, okay? Just very simple. Um, I mean, even, I think even we would be able to get away with a little bit of here, just a little bit, because there's a shadow here. We cannot forget that there is a shadow, uh, like a cast shadow, from the jacket over to the other side, right? So something like this. And again, if you want the thingy. So th this part, the lighting part, that takes a little bit of practice, okay? Because you have to think. You have to think really hard and say, okay, where's the lighting come from? And so forth and so forth, right? There, um, you can also be quite subtle with the lighting. So this is where I think that using a lasso is super useful. Um, so if I were to, for example, say, um, let's see, I would like to have light that comes from here to there, so like a, a gentle pass, right? Then I can do something like this up to here, and like something like that, right? And what I do now, okay, so I've made a selection so that I can't go out of it. I take my eraser, right, and then I take, for example, a soft like brush but I make it big okay like I, I take this soft round pressure opacity I make it quite big and I go over this gently right control H if you don't want to see thing so to give that feeling of like that there is a bit of a transition of light okay you can do the same uh, on the other side so this is quite useful in lighting because uh, for example for these parts if you don't want very hard edges Right, you can play a little bit with the idea uh, of saying, for example, okay, up to here, this and that, maybe here. Okay, again, you can play very gentle, control H, very gentle with the idea of 
like making a transition in some of these thingies to make it a little bit softer. It helps a little bit sometimes with um, with some of the transitions that it's not too hard, not too over the top, right? It can help. Uh, when you remove your colors, that's what you end up with basically. So that's what we're looking at right now. See, so that's your, your shadow layer that we're working on. That's all from one light source. Um, most of the time you want to have more than one, uh, but this is what you work, what you've got if you just got one light source. Um, okay, let's deselect that. Now maybe let's add a secondary light source, right? Maybe another one from the other side. So what we can do there, same procedure. This time maybe if you want, we can make one of these light sources that is not as strong and uh, we can say, for example, okay, I want that light source to go maybe up to here somewhat. Uh, create a little bit of a thingy here, here, and we have to be very careful. Um, yeah, here, no, not on top. Uh, we have to be careful here and maybe something like this. Okay, so I made a selection of parts that I'm willing to light, okay, or remove the shadows. I control uh, Command H or Control H. I press the letter E with my soft round brush. And again, so this is a softer light. So here I can maybe gently go over, um, see, and it will create these little edges that I already created for myself here. Okay, and wherever I want to remove more of it, I can get that done. See, so now we have, if I were to remove the colors, that's our shadow pass right now as it is, right? Um, and then from here on out, we can continue playing, right? So what we need, uh, we can continue working with. Um, so let's say, for example, we deselect, okay? And we can maybe, actually, let's add a tiny little bit here because that would tend to happen a little bit, right? Let's light this a little bit. Very gentle. It doesn't, eh? Command H and then press the letter E and just go very ever so gentle. Go over it to provide a little bit of that uh, lighting. Okay, not much because this one was a, a gentler light. And then you have that part. Um, the same if you want to have darker shadows, okay? So that does you can still go for darker shadows. What happens when you want to go for a darker shadow and you say, okay, now I really want to um, have parts that are darker? No problem. You can always create another uh, layer. You call it um, deep shadows, for example. And again, this is not the only way of doing it. There are many ways of doing it. You can make selections and bring the shadows down, but this also helps and you can put this to multiply exactly the same color as the previous one, right? And here you, for example, say, okay, like under the eyes, I want darker shadows, okay? So then you just, see, we haven't even changed color and under the eyes, you can say, for example, okay, I want things to be darker there, right? And you can either do it like like this, right? By uh, adding the, um, the shadows yourself, you draw them. Uh, for example, under the nose, okay, under the nose there tends to be extra shadows all the time, right, sometimes in that fold here. Um, the lips, they tend to have additional shadows, okay, because one is facing up, one is facing down. Uh, under the chin, okay, so there tends to be always a little bit of extra shadows. Another thing that can help if you want to, again, you, you've got all these um, flats to work with, so they can help you. For example, if you were to say, W, remember, you can still make the anti-aliasing choice of saying, stay within these lines. Don't do any shadows outside of it. Okay, that's why we have our flats. Now I go back to my deep shadows. I do control H and I go back to, for example, uh, the brush. And now when I draw, I don't have to worry about getting outside, right? So it always stays inside and so forth. Um, which is quite useful because obviously I have to be careful not to go over it on this side. Um, let's see. Oh, and I have the thingy on here if I want a hard shadow. Oh. See, so, you know, these are just a few other things that can help and create a little bit more depth um, for your drawing, right? And you can keep going like that until you have, like, places that you really want. Okay, for example, here. Now you always have to think a little bit about, okay, where would that shadow fall? Okay, so this is just one of the many different uh, coloring techniques. 
Okay, there are many. Um, but I'm just showing you one that's quite easy to work with, that doesn't require a crazy amount of skill. Um, you just need to try to understand lighting a little bit, which is very important. Okay, so always try to understand the shape, try to feel the shape uh, of your of your um, of your characters, of everything that you're doing. Uh, so let's say here, for example, a little bit of shading uh, here because it goes away. Uh, you know, things like this uh, that help a little bit. Uh, you could maybe, even in the hairs a little bit, you could do a little bit of nice hair strand details um, to provide that extra uh, feeling of here there's no light. Uh, and also here I see that there is a little bit of a... Um, I think so we haven't played with that idea. So maybe go up to here. Okay. Make that selection. Control H or Command H. We go back to on this one, we get the soft round pressure, uh, we make it big. So this is an eraser, okay, and we can play around with getting some of the light, uh, oops, in our shadows, of course, that's this layer right here. And as you can, as you've noticed, it stays within, like, where you want it to stay, right? So that is something that really helps already, okay? There are a few little things that you can do like that um, for just... Like, for example, your shadows. And like I said, if you remove that, it's like a shadow pass, if you will. In 3D, you can see this is your deep shadows that you just have. And that's your quick shadow pass that we made. Um, and then we add that. And here we can see that. And then you can choose, obviously, how you want to. But this is something that's very simple there. These two are on multiply. Um, your selection is just your selection, so that's not something that we have to worry about too much. What we can still do is play a little bit with the hair, okay, because we have uh, hair strands. So here we can also, again, play a little bit with the idea. So I'm going to, in my flats, I'm going to select the hair, right, and then Control H, and then go back to my shadows. Now I know that whatever I'm going to do now will stay within the hair. Okay, so here, for example, if I wanted to, well, I wouldn't use a soft brush, actually, it doesn't work really well. Something better uh, is to, you know, work a little bit with these things uh, so that it gives the idea that, you know, there's a little bit of light hitting that. Um, it, it's as if you were painting with the uh, brush itself, right? But actually, all you're doing is uh, just uh, removing because you're with the eraser you're just removing the shadows that's all you're doing okay so very simple okay um you can add more dramatic lighting so let's do that now uh, on top of your shadows because you have to add that on top if you put it below it doesn't work we can do maybe an extra light lighting like pretend like a rim light or something right and lighting tends to be nice and warm so we can go in this direction right so the opposite of the shadows quite important uh, and then you put it as a one of these, basically. Okay, light and screen, color dodge. Uh, let's try with the screen. And let's try to add like a, like a rim light or something. Okay, like a rim light is something like, uh, we can do that here. Okay, so something, let's see. Uh, screen, oh, see, I still have my selection. If I do this, yes, there we go. Okay, so a rim light, for example, we could do something like... Rim light tends to be also very, very, like, gentle. So not... You don't need much for a rim light. Okay, it can be a little bit here. Uh, but a rim light is just to indicate uh, a little bit of extra light. And so sometimes they tend to be here, a little bit here. Uh, very gentle. Sometimes on the edges... It, basically, rim lights are just useful for um, highlighting... Um, like edges and stuff like that. Like they they help a little bit with that. Sometimes some people have a little bit of a room light on the edge of their nose. Uh, you can play a little bit around with that. Uh, see if that works. If this is too much here, for example, it makes it look like he has a very shiny nose, so we're not going to do that. Um, but these type of things, they help a little bit. Or you can add a little bit of a room light here. It's very subtle, but it can help a little bit. You can obviously make it a whole lot more. Again, it depends on the type of light that you have. Okay, so that's also important. The more you know about lighting, the more you'll understand this part. But if you were to, for example, let's say here, here a little bit. 
So you, you don't have to make a perfect selection, just control H. And then here, for example, if I were to work with a soft brush, very gentle. Okay, my opacity here is at 100, so it might be a little bit too much. And you see how I'm going outside? That's not an issue right now. I'll address that in a second, and you'll see how. Right, let's say I used this, right? And remember how I have that selection of the character, so deselect really quickly. Let's make a selection of the character. And if I were to now shift control, no, uh, what is it? Uh, shift control I, yeah? You inverse the selection, and when you delete, you basically get rid of it. What we could have done to save us this part was simply to um, just select the character in the first place then I could never have gone outside of the character, so that would have been even more logical to do. See, but this is an additional light that we can work with um, as if it's turned on over there, right? And you can continue playing with that idea and saying like, oh, well, if that hits there, then, you know, logic would state that this part is also going to be hit, right? Like, so when drawing, when you're not working in 3D, you have to you try to use that logic yourself, okay? And we have a bit of a a part here that seems quite well lit so we can play with the idea let me here as well oops I think I just lost it shift and here okay so now I've got all that control H we go back to the letter B the brush we can add that a little bit here and a little bit here gentle okay to maybe see if we believe that a little bit more. Right, so you can turn them on and off, and at any point in time you can always um, switch here and there. So here you can see it's a screen. Um, lighting see, it makes a big difference if you work with these things. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, maybe... In this case the, the hair is quite flat. I, I still want to create a little bit more contrast in there. Uh, we could do that. We could maybe do that just by, again, if we select the flats, we just select the hair. And then we go back into our deep shadows. We can try with the deep shadows. Now, oh yeah, that's another good point. You no longer have the same color that you had selected, right? So one thing is to make swatches. That's one, because you could go to your uh, previous swatches. So that's here. You can go at the top. And then you'll have the same one that you had. Um, so, for example, what I want to do here a little bit is maybe play with the idea of making the hair a little bit darker because there's no light there. Um, just gently like this. Um, let's see if that works. Yeah, a little bit. If we were to remove the line art, basically that's what you end up with, right? Because the line art in this style is very important. Without the line art, it always looks a little bit funky. Right, so this is a very simple way of just adding some basic flats, some uh, basic shadows, and uh, but it's important that you keep the, the, the line art because once you remove the line art, look what happens. Okay, you've got parts that are jagged edges. Uh, this underneath the line art, it looks horrible. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, this technique works if you keep the line art there. That is quite a useful technique. Um, and here you can use whatever you want. See, we've got the selection here now. If you wanted to add a, a cool little gradient effect or something, we can do that here, for example. You can add a new layer, uh, call that background gradient, for example, right? And you can gradient, you can just do here, right? So you hold in your thingy, we'll make it transparent, and we'll say, we'll play with an idea of, I don't know, just to create a bit of contrast. The color, again, doesn't really matter. You basically, um, do we still have the selection? No, let me quickly make the selection of the background again. So W, I select it. Then I go to my background layer. I control H because I don't like to see the marching ants. And I just do a gradient from here to here, for example. Um, and then that creates something like that that I can later play with and say like, hmm, too strong. 
uh, I wanted something very thingy or maybe I want uh, a different type of gradient. Maybe I want a gradient that works like a ball, right? So like more something like this where it radiates out. Um, and then you've got something like that. Very simple. Okay, very simple technique that just allows you to very quickly have something to work with and that looks decent. Um, now, very last thing that we might be able to do is maybe quickly add some textures uh, somewhere. So that is something that you can do, uh, let's see, um, above your flats, right? We can do textures. And here we can play again with the idea of a selection. Okay, so let's say we wanted to create a texture on, uh, let's say, the coat, right? So we select the coat and we want a texture only on the coat. We go to the textures here and then we click on this icon right here, right? That's a mask. Okay, that's to create a mask. So we have a selection. With that selection made, you click on that and now it created a mask. Okay, so that means that if I were to go here, so be careful, this is when you're modifying your mask, this is when you're drawing. Okay, so let me quickly go to color and grab any color really quickly. If I really, if I were to very fast just draw, see, it only stays on the jacket, which is really cool. That's exactly what I want, right? So what we can do, uh, I have a few textures here that we might be able to play with. I don't know which one, but let's just see. Uh, I'll open a few up here. Uh, let's see, they're opening up as we speak. All right, so I've got this texture to play. I've just got these from the internet. So these are just simple textures um, that we can maybe work with. So maybe, I don't know, what is this one? I like this one, maybe play with this one. So what am I gonna do? I don't need that one, I don't need that one. Uh, I don't need that one. Here's my coloring demo. I'm just gonna take this texture and import it. Um, here, let me do that again. So this texture and import it right here. Doesn't matter where. Okay, so now it's on a separate uh, layer. I'll just use this one. Okay, we'll, we'll do it the other way around. All right, so we've got a texture. Let's call this texture. I'm sure there's an easier way of doing this, but with our selection here of our jacket, right? we make our jacket selection, what we did previously in our flats, we go to our texture and create that mask that I was talking about. There you go. Now we have the texture exactly only on the mask. There you go. Okay, so when these are linked, right, that means that you move them at the same time. If you unlink them, quite important, then you can move around the texture. So in case you wanted to create something cool, like a cool effect, right? So now uh, I can play around with all these different effects here. Right, let's say I wanted to play with color or something else, or, you know, like just an effect for the coat. Um, I can look around, right? So let's say, I don't know, let's do a screen for example, or color dots tends to have really cool effects. Lower the opacity obviously so that we can still see the thingy around it. Uh, and then we can play around with this. Okay, so this image, okay, you can contr uh, control T, command T, and then on your either right click now, yeah, then you'll get this and you can warp it and then you create yourself like for example a grid you can create a grid of 3x3 three three or 4x4 four four. so for example this or 4x4 four four, right and here you can play around a little bit with the shape of your texture right to make it go a little bit more with the jacket for example right so then it's not just a flat texture Right? It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but it helps you to just create a bit of a um, believable um, thingy that you can, something a little bit more believable. Once you're sure that this is what you want, you just press enter and you've got yourself something that you can work with. And again, at any point in time, you can change the effect that you want to go for. Right? With this uh, thingy and these textures you can use on practically anything okay it's like luminosity or whatever you can literally play around with it 
um, and find one that you like. Let me see. This you could be doing all day. And not only that, let's not forget the texture itself. You can change the color, right? Control U, and you wanted a completely different color, you can play with that as well, because don't forget, you still have control over that as well, right? At any point in time, you can make it like super saturated, uh, make it brighter, uh, make it darker, uh, whatever works for you, basically. And then you just select, look at the opacity. You can either go super like crazy, or you can make it a very subtle thing um, that he has. Uh, and then it adds additional flavor to your work, right? Uh, and you could do that with anything, uh, absolutely anything. That exact same texture could have been used for the background um, for anything you want, really. Uh, the more you play around with the warp, the better results you'll get, obviously, for the for, for the coat. Um, but it's quite quite useful to know that you can do these type of things as well. All right. Well, I think that that's one style that we looked at. Okay primarily used for comic book artists. Uh, that's how they use it. Uh, if I remove the line art, that's what you'll be left with. Nothing too fancy to look at. Um, so now we're gonna have a look at how to reproduce the same, but this time when you want to uh, remove the line art. So you will only want to use the line art as a reference and you want to use all the rest uh, to work with. Okay, so your, your colors are basically what are gonna drive your work. Whereas here, your color, I mean, your line art is basically what drives the shapes of your uh, drawing. Okay, let's get uh, straight to that. Okay, and actually, before I forget, um, before we move on to that, I want to quickly add some lighting to this young man's eyes. Um, some quick lighting effect. So we're in the lighting layer. Uh, I'm just going to grab, let's see. Um, I'm going to select this with my brush and I press the option key to get the same effect. I'm going to take a soft brush, something simple, um, and maybe play with the idea. I might like the idea of going, saying like, this cannot be touched, neither can this. Now I'm going to reverse it, so Control shift i and I'm going to get rid of my selection and then I'm going to get this um, effect and let that get a little bit brighter uh, around the eyes as if you know to say that the character has some right eyes like a like a robot type of thing um, now the center stays because you see the center is unaffected because I made a selection uh, and I deselect it right now uh, and then I got something like this. Now, again, you have to be careful with this because light will, for example, not uh, reach here. So then with that same uh, thingy with the eraser, I can just erase that away. Okay, the parts that um, where the light would not hit. Okay, so for example, here it wouldn't really hit there. Now we have to be careful, of course, because, yeah, there's already some type of lighting there. So... Maybe here, um, with a soft brush, maybe go over it and just erase that little bit so that it's not too harsh um, and visible. Okay, it might look a little bit strange. Also here, actually, right under the eyelid, um, normally the light wouldn't really hit, right, because that goes inwards. See, here, the more you know about this, the, the, the more realistic that will look. Um, it's quite important to just know your anatomy a little bit, which will uh, help you with that. So now it just gives that feeling of robotic thing. Let me get this uh, on this side a little bit as well. Don't want any lighting here. Only just uh, where it would make sense. So here it would not make sense. There would not be any light here. It wouldn't reach. Right. So there we go, more or less. Move it a little bit here make it less thingy so that it doesn't look that the guy's wearing eye makeup or something because that's not what we want All right so this gives a little bit of that feeling of like maybe he's got um android eyes or something of the like okay um i think we can move on to the next one so number two 
is the one where we are going to uh, do this uh, without line art. Okay, so I'm just going to make a collection. So I'm going to select this and then shift select uh, my flats here, make a group, okay, with that folder and call this uh, comics style, for example. Doesn't really matter what you call it, like style one or style two. I'm going to make another one and we're going to call this um, painting style, maybe. Or, well, not, not free painting, like maybe digital painting. Digital painting. Again, there are many different ways of doing things like this. Uh, so this this one that I'm going to show you right now is a little bit different. So we also start with selections, but the selections are not like on a single layer. Okay, here the selections are separate. Um, and this is quite important because um, what you don't want is these hard edges like what you saw. Uh, in the comic book selections. Okay, so here what we're going to do, we're going to go back to the lasso tool. This time we're going to turn on anti-aliasing, very important. Feather, leave that to zero, that's very important. Uh, and we are going to have to do exactly the same thing. So we're going to have to make a selection around this uh, character. So I'm very quickly going to do that and speed up the video. Okay, so I think that I've got more or less a selection made. Let's add a very quick color, doesn't matter which one. There you go, something that looks somewhat like a skin color. Uh, to thingy. There we go. Up. Let's quickly add that. Oops, let me... Not as a gradient, of course, but as a color. There we go. Deselect. And here what we'll see is, yeah, exactly. So our selections are, like the, the, the edges are soft. Okay, so they're not like really hard, which is exactly what I wanted for this one. Uh, what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna add a little bit of detail. So I just do the heart round pressure size, which has anti-aliasing on it. This time I'm not in a pencil, I'm using a brush. Okay, and just, I'm using the exact same color to just uh, finish a few of these areas okay to tighten it up a little bit and it's important to have a silhouette at least bare minimum is a silhouette that we can work with okay and then we can remove as we need to remove things this takes a little bit of time again everything always takes a little bit of time but you'll save so much more time later on by getting this done okay if you get this done right now you won't have to worry about it later on again Okay, so that's fine. This looks okay-ish. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, uh, as long as it just gives a bit of a idea of where you're going. Uh, so here as well, uh, to make it a little bit believable. And there you go. In a second, we're going to check this uh, without the uh, the line art. Okay, but we use the line art just here right now, just to make a very quick selection. There we go. Up. Let's have a look at this here. That seems all right. Yep, that's open. Good, good. It's primarily just the hair that I needed to double check. Right, let's remove the line art. And that well, looks okay to me. I mean, I think I can work with this. Better set to zoom. Uh, yeah, that looks okay. All right, they're nice selections. See, they're the anti-aliasing is on which is exactly what we want if we have a little thing here and there that's fine we can work with that okay perfect all right so this style um means that we're only going to use the line art just as a reference nothing else okay so this will be character two so i'm quickly going to name it character two okay that's my selection of character two what I'm going to do with this uh, is, for now, let's see, let's start working on the hair now, okay? Uh, I'm going to do, 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 select character 2, so control um, select, make a new layer, okay, so I've, I already have the selection now, if I were to remove everything, see, the ants are doing their job, um, and I'm going to keep this on because 
now I want to basically keep the hair. So I'm going to go into my lasso tool and I'm going to option hold down the alt, alt key and I'm going to go and try do this. Okay, it's basically going around the hair. It doesn't have to be perfect. I can fix everything later on. Right? But just getting a little bit of this. Okay, and getting it here out and then all this right just doesn't matter that's all see now all only the hair is left and I still need to deselect this as well there you go that's gone I only got the hair left now of course because I didn't have a perfectly steady hand uh, I need to add this tiny little bit here uh, here I went over it a little bit so select this one and that looks to me like that's a good selection for the hair. So again, we give the hair another color. Notice how we're working on a different layer now. Okay, quite important. Um, because again, we're going to remove this. So we're going to keep um, that information. Okay, and this is uh, hair. So we give it a name. What we could do also, if you want to, is already add ad additional selections uh, like to, to say for example this is for um, the the ears the this the that the, the uh, like um, headset the cigar and all that stuff so what I'm going to do now uh, as you've seen how I've done this uh, is I'm going to continue making um, selections I'll maybe do just one more so that you can see it uh, how I work so I always select a part that I need like for example in this case uh, I want to do the beard. Okay, so what I can do is, considering I already have a part of the selection here, I'll select the character again, yeah, and then make a new selection again, and from here on out, go back to L, and I'm going to cut out uh, what I don't need, right? So this, for example, this, 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 uh, all of this, because yeah, that we don't really need. All of this, 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 this. So you have to use your head a little bit and think like, okay, what exactly don't I need, right? So I don't need all of this, this. The only reason why I selected the character in the first place was to have a little bit of, um, yeah, time saver basically because I already have a part of the selection. Right, so this, 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 I don't need this. There you go, something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, there you go, something like that. And now, where did I start this? Go around to over here. Okay, so normally we have, let's see, what do we got? We got that one and we got that one so I can remove all the rest, right? So now I can remove all of this, which I don't need, all of this. It might be a little bit strange to see like this or to understand, but um, basically I'm only just taking what I need. Okay, and I don't need this anymore. Sometimes it's easier to remove the big chunks first uh, and then the other ones. Uh, again, there are many different ways of doing this. In Clip Studio Paint, it's just Press of a button, and then you've got that. So if I were to deselect now, uh, and remove this again, see, so I got this right now. Okay, so I'm going to continue uh, working like this until I've got all the selections that I want. I'm going to speed up the video uh, so that you don't have to wait too long uh, to see all the flats come together, and then we'll take it from there. As usual, let's not forget to name our layers. So this one is beard, um, and we'll take it from there. All right.
now for this last part I'll quickly show you um, just the side of the um, I think it's wait this was the zipper the side of the jacket so let me quickly add a new layer this will be the jacket and the jacket will be for that you'll see we're going to make actually a very simple selection just like this so remember when we were doing the flats uh, and we were being very careless with our selections we're going to do exactly the same thing so we're just going to select these two areas we're going to give it a color again colors do not matter right now we're just making selections right i deselect to get rid of everything that i don't need i go to the character one i select that so control select i shift control i okay so that i invert my selection okay i go back to the jacket remove everything i don't need so that's what I just did. Deselect. I go now to the parts that I don't need. So for example, the shirt. Okay, so that's this one, the blue part. The shirt, I'm going to select that and remove it from the jacket. And I'm going to select the zipper. So control select and just remove it from the jacket. And then normally, if everything goes well, I should have everything. In the cigarette, what I'm going to do, and I think cigarettes with a C, I don't know, I don't smoke, so I have no idea how you write that stuff. Um, let me do an alpha lock. So an alpha lock is this, right? So that means that when I draw now, okay, if I want to draw, for example, the orange part um, with a brush. Let's see what brush do I have here. You know, that'll work. See, I only stay within the, uh, within the selection, basically, because I created an alpha lock. Okay, so this is quite useful because now, for example, we could, if we wanted to, I mean, there are many different ways of doing this, right? Um, and if we just wanted to have all our selections just in case, right? So what we can do is take our, uh, let's see, let's see, ideally, take all that, make a new thingy and call these selections. Sorry, so... Selections. Okay, and then when we remove the line art, see we have, I'll just add a background really quickly so that at least we have that uh, inside our selection. So under character, background, there we go. Just a quick square one, and we'll do something like so. Uh, let's see any color again colors are not important right now I'm just quickly add a color there you go okay oh yeah and I wanted to do the same for this maybe select the same one from here up uh, on a separate thing so that I have more control over it later on uh, background square let's call this background Ideally, I would have done the same with the cigarette butt uh, and the light and all that stuff. But again, because it's such a small item, I'm just going to leave it as is and then just work with a, an alpha lock, which will, this thing here, we'll, we'll discuss that in a second. I'll alpha lock it again. Right, so if I were to remove the line art, let's see. Uh, we've got everything more or less where we want it. Here towards the edge, what we have is this type of stuff. So what we can do if we want to uh, keep all that on the background right so for example we could technically we could if we wanted to there are many ways of doing this but we could for example make all of these let's see select them all quick quick create clipping mask so they all become clipping masks to the background meaning that they will never go outside of the background no matter what i do it will never go outside of the background so for the shirt, for example, if I wanted to continue drawing the shirt part and say I want you to go all the way here, so see, now it never goes outside of that part. See, that, that's something that it's one way of solving it. Um, same with the jacket, and we can do all that for, I mean, every single part like this. Um, let's see what else we got here the jacket 
we got this here same we can just work our way all the way here this is just so that we have nice selections that's all nothing else there's no other reason and in some cases you might need to do a little bit of cleanup um, so that helps a little bit here and there right just to create a little bit of things now, as you've noticed this is quite time consuming I mean that's just what it is and it doesn't create perfect uh, selections everywhere either right so like what we did here uh, it's not 100% perfect uh, the zipper here so you can go over it a little bit if you want some softer edges um, I think also it might be possibly because we had um, this was turned off anti-aliasing or at least for me um, so that might contribute to that stuff right also here with the chain see there's a little bit of cleanup uh, required here and there well you'll say like okay actually I want this to go like this Sorry, uh, do I have anything selected now? No, then I'm a bit baffled why. Okay, so that's doing that. I see, because the shirt is, that's also important, yes. If the chain is above the shirt, uh, then you have to put it above it in the actual um, order that it was in. All right, so quite important. Go back to the jacket again some minor cleanup here there you go there you go so normally this should be okay back to the zipper this is just so that it's all nicely um, lined up here okay let's see yeah that should be okay I think now we have a nice uh, selection of everything that we need and we can start playing around now with the colors okay with the actual colors that we want um, this uh, release clipping mask is not really necessary anymore uh, or actually it was supposedly or what we can do we just take the background now that we've gone over anyways just take the background select the background right so you just control select it then control shift I you reverse it and you just remove it everywhere where you don't need it so for example things like the zipper right gone uh, the shirt gone the jacket gone I think these were the main issues uh, that we were having here deselect these were the only areas where I was looking into that let me see yeah I think so so now we got something nice um, and selectable okay so the idea with this one is that we are going to start uh, working, um, you know, to create art that's basically, now we have nice selection. So we could use the exact same method that we use for the comics. Okay, so that's pretty much the identical same. Um, and that would be basically, we have our selection. So this is basically the flats, if you want it. But they're just all on separate layers and the process of the lighting and stuff that could be completely the same so if i were to do lighting make a new group lighting and you were to say um say for example shadows start with shadows right and here for example we would work with let's see we could work with character 2 we make a selection of character 2 because our shadows exist within this so we could go here in our shadows and make a um, mask okay so what we just did right now and then we can work with our mask so now our shadows will only exist within here okay and then we don't have to worry about it anymore so again take any color any random color that you consider a shadow for this it might be worth turning on your lights though um, just to have that uh, done so you can fill in your canvas if you will uh, and then remove what you don't need right for your shadow so exactly the same way of working um, I you don't have to do shadows like this but I tend to find it much easier to work like this so filling everything black and then just saying okay where is the light coming from okay and then that tends to be quite easy to work with you can work with soft um, shapes and sometimes hearts it depends which one you need or you can do what they use in um, 
in comics, uh, like a cutting grad style, where you make selections and you say, for example, um, let's see, uh, for the hair, for example, right? No, wait, or let's say the light came from, yeah, let's, let's make it come from this side. So that would be something like this. I'm, I'm just like winging it now. Okay. So I don't, this is just really quickly up. Oh, there you go. This would be lighting, uh, something like this. Here you have a little bit of like beard coming in, something like this, something like this, a little bit of this. Yep. Um, here we can maybe something like that, right? And here we can make a really, really rough selection like this because it will never go outside of it anyways, right? And then uh, we can hide this and erase uh, what we don't need. Right, so with a soft brush, for example, we could, if I were to do it quickly like this, see, it will still maintain that line that I had on the sides. Um, and depending on how much I remove, it will create the things. Now this, again, the, the shadows are not that strong here. So did I put a multiply? Yes. Um, but it's, it's an easy way, like a cut and grad style, to quickly remove, you know, just some stuff that you want to quickly get some shadows out. And the same now, see, if I were to show the thing again, it's basically cutting into that. Um, and you do the exact same thing uh, over and over again. So you can, for example, here say like, okay, so the lighting hits here a little bit. I want a bit of the nose in there. And this takes a little bit of practice to figure out which areas make sense to like do this on um, you know because it's not always that straightforward so something like that maybe and again we do this and we go over it gently we go over here a little bit uh, and you keep going until you got all the parts that you want right so same here you might want to get some action here in uh, so on that height and then you know, just say for example you want some of the lighting to be hitting there as well uh, and so forth and so forth and sometimes you can just like hand paint gently uh, some some softer things but creating hard edges is quite important for lighting what you don't want to do is like just with a soft brush go everywhere like this then you know you, it, it just looks the, the face just looks uh, dirty like that so what you definitely want to do is just find some spots that you know the, the the shape of the face goes in and wherever you think that the light would hit or not uh, that's where you're going against and the other way is the same right so you with the color you can also color it back in right so a soft color like for example here there would be no lighting here here you can play a little bit around with hairs for example you can choose you can either take something that's not as hard right and work a little bit with like some painter thingies here right to get that effect and you can do that to get some of the hairs in um, and so forth and so forth and same here especially hair that goes down right here I would recommend um, doing something like this and where the hair strands go right and then later on as you remove the line art these things will start coming into play right it takes a little bit of time I mean actually it's quite time consuming this way of doing it but you're using the lines basically as a reference to guide you and be like oh okay that's where the, the thingies are right because like I said if I were to remove this bit by bit see all the details that I've got here I can start adding them in and um, painting through them right and the same goes for if you were to erase uh, let's get the other one this one uh, and do the same in the opposite direction oops uh, let's see on, on here let me deselect can I yes I can see so now I can start working my way into these areas a little bit. Uh, also, if you don't want to, if you want to do a softer flow, you can, for example, press number five or four on your keyboard, see, so that your opacity here goes lower, and then you can work your way through here. 
All right, and then you just um, basically start painting the hair on the other side. All right, and it's it's basically all I'm doing is just now painting in the negative uh, direction. All right, so just to, I mean, you can do for example the big shapes like what we were discussing uh, earlier uh, with the uh, tool that I showed you, like the cut and grad. So you make your gradients and then you cut into it and then here when you do details you do it by hand you perfectly do that by hand so that you get a, a nice transition especially here at the bottom right because there you definitely want to have darker ends and here it all depends I mean you've got full control it depends uh, me I like to paint a lot just like have freedom to paint so that often means that um, I like to create additional um, thingies, uh, additional, let me quickly do a multiply here. If you want to do it like this, you can do it like this, and then you just create darker hair strands, especially the ones at the bottom, right? Again, takes a little while. Uh, all this is not going to happen overnight or straight away, because whatever you didn't add in uh, your uh, original, uh, what's to call it, whatever you, you don't have here, see? Your, your line art here, uh, if you remove the line art, then all the detail that is not there, you're going to have to add it through painting it in, right? And that is important. That is something that is very important to remember, right? Because right now, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm adding these, uh, these details that would otherwise be in the line art, right? I have to look at the line art for reference uh, and be like, oh, okay, that's where... The hair does that or that's where the hair does that right and you have to think a lot about where the lighting is so this is a little bit more difficult than the first style that we looked at right so the the, the one at number one uh this is a little bit more difficult and is also used in comics maybe a little bit um in like if you want a, a more like a painterly style um but it's it's yeah it's there so the, the most important thing to remember like i said is to use your line art as a reference, like as a guide, and if we remove that, so you, you start adding all these details, you just have to be very careful, right? Because here, um, you have to think literally in terms of light. Okay, so light goes gradual from one thing to another, right? So you can start maybe here, and then you gradually go to, let's say, now the opacity, bring it back to five, and then work that way, right? And then it's, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a work. Okay, because you're basically end up adding the details like that. Same with all the things here, right? So here, um, all these little crevices here, right? You'd have to go over them again, gently, especially here, right? Because there's no light there. And all that type of stuff you're going to have to do here, right? Gentle and add the thing there and... So that's what these line arts are there for, right? The line art is there to um, help you and guide you, but like I said, don't forget that um, in some cases, if it's not there, um, then you have to put that information back in yourself, right? So you have to draw that in again um, and so forth and so forth, right? So it's, it's quite a lot of work like this. But it's, it's definitely, a, a, I mean, a system that works. Um, and it's very pretty once it's done. Once you've put in all the work and all the time uh, to get it done, then it's very pretty. See, I'm just doing this very quickly right now just so you get an idea. Um, but once it's done, uh, it looks very cool. And you can do all the details like so and the same with, um, like, places of the nose, right, where there's really no uh, thingies, it's just shadows. Well, the lips, obviously, they tend to be darker. Uh, areas here tend to be darker. This, um, the hairs on the beard at the bottom, they'll be darker because you'll have also shadows here. So, see, all that stuff, you'll have to start adding in. Um, and takes a little bit of time right here as well um, it also depends on how 
hard you want to do all this, right? How like, parts that you're going to have to remove with hard shadows. I mean, with a hard brush, for example. Like here. Here, put the opacity back to 100. Right, and so forth, and so forth. I most likely remove this. Looks a bit funny. Um, but you get my my point. Right, so bit by bit, you get the shapes in, and then you get that art style where you have no line art, um, but your shadows are in there. Right, like also here. Uh, so your shadows are there. So we can do very like a very quick pass on the on the jacket, for example. Uh, let's say here. Right, anything that's basically facing towards you. Did I just remove the thingy? Yes, I did. Let me do that again, just like so. Right, and here, for example, with the eraser, like I said, you take a softer brush and go over it gently. You can even remove or hide the ants and Play a little bit with the idea that you know your um, things. You can also take off your selection so you can see what your lighting looks like, right? While you're working on it, it's always useful, right? These are just your shadows or your lighting, if you will. Uh, you can always quickly have a look and then um, take it from there. But a lot, a lot of the work is already done. So this you can call it uh, detailed shadows, detailed shadows. Even here, if you were to just See, it just very quickly showcases uh, where the things are. So, um, and from there on, you can start doing all the details bit by bit. It takes, like I said, it takes a while, but you have clean selections that you can work with. And eventually, over time, um, you can work with, for example, like here again with the shadows, right? We've got a part here that I could keep doing this forever because there's just so many things that we can look into, we could like play around with the idea that this part is um, like better lit. Right, so we hide that and then we take the eraser um, and we just go over it for example. Right, and if we were to see it like that. See then it gives it a bit of a thing. Now it's a very hard shadow here so we can uh, do it a bit softer. I mean, these are all choices that you make, right, just to get that 3D feel in there uh, with the details one as well. I mean, this is this is clearly. Let me deconnect. This is uh, clearly too too hard. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically painting. Your your selections are there to help you stay within the lines. To you know, like uh, for example, if you only wanted to work within the VR set, you take the VR set. You want to get all these hard shadows out there or something. You can do that. You can like if you were to do that. Sorry, I mean in the hard shadows, you have to go back to the hard shadows or the detailed shadows. You do that, and then you basically reset it back to um, what you wanted to do, and you keep the other uh, things. So your selections are still there, and that's the most important part. Um, but your detailed shadows are very important because they're the ones that end up um, providing the details that you don't have with your lines. Yeah? Like, for example, here. Right? Over time, um, you're going to have to go darker, and create the parts that you know are just very dark uh, because we all have these little areas here and there um, in painting in everything it's just there it's just the way it is um, and these things are the ones that provide the detail um, the, you just go smaller and smaller every single time look at your line art and then where you see these little things that's where you have to go over it you can also the line art you can make it thinner and thinner like so you can start seeing it right you put the opacity maybe to like this and then you go back to the detailed shadows and then you're like okay I want this here for example and I want this here and here and then you remove the line art and then you see which parts you need and which ones you don't and you keep going um, from there especially with the nose okay so there are you can do it a bit softer here right you can there are parts of the nose that really do tend to go dark. Right here, here. Right, and you can blend these in uh, bit by bit because now, for example, it's too dark. Um, 
So you can take the eraser and start gradually to you know, blend it a little bit in more so that it's not too dark um, and so forth. And like that until you just have all the elements that you need. Um, but it, it takes time for sure. That's one thing that you really cannot um, go around and especially when you go painting um, what you want to do. You can work perfectly just with a hard round pressure brush. I mean, everything can be done just with that. If I mean, it is perfectly possible. And people, it's you know, it's something that people don't really tend to do. But if you just work with your opacity and your um, your hard round brush, you can literally paint anything. Okay, people are always going on about oh, what brush do you use and this and that. But um, in all honesty, really, you can do anything just with this brush. This just one hard round pressure size. Uh, and just keep playing with your opacity and then you can literally just do whatever you want um, and get all the details in that you want and, and um, yeah just keep on adding and adding and um, you know bit by bit and then all these little things they come together you just have to keep looking at your line art to see where these little crevices are and um, you know, the, the little details that you want to add here, for example, you know, these things that connect and you remove your line art again so that you get an idea of where everything is, right? And then you just keep going, right? Uh, and if it's too hard, you just go to the eraser and you erase some of it so it's not too hard. And you keep going and you keep going. Right. Um, Let's see. What do you say that we actually modify the colors a little bit so that they look a little bit more acceptable? So, uh, let's start with this guy's... This guy's... Let's see. His neck tattoos. Control U, don't forget that. You can still uh, work with all these things. We can make it a whole lot less saturated. Uh, and we can make it a bit darker as well. And play a bit around with his tattoos. We can also, another thing that we haven't done yet, is play around with the opacity because now they are on different layers. So we can really play around with the idea that, you know, um, the opacity is another additional thing that we haven't looked at yet. All these things can be worked on and we can add details to everything that we want. So here we have a shirt. Uh, we can work with the shirt and say, okay, I want less saturation. I want it to be brighter. Um, let's see, and maybe a different type of thing, also the background, right? Just change the background, for example, and work with something else. Let's saturate it for one. Uh, and maybe work with something a bit more, something like this, maybe. It works a little bit better on this guy. Uh, and see, and like that, we can just add whatever we want, right? If we wanted to add additional effects on here or, you know, we wanted to do a gradient, but we want control over the gradient, we make a new layer, we create a clipping mask, gradient, and that means it will never go outside the thingy. So we create a gradient, for example, and we give it a, this time. Yeah, let, let's keep working with that yellow and see what happens when we do this. Uh, maybe we like it, maybe we don't. Maybe we need to look at different alternatives, and like look which one works best. Screen seems to be okay. Overlay, what if we work with multiplies, make it darker or darken. Let's see what that does. Not much, <laughs> obviously, because it's not going to do much. Let's see, color. Da, 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 da. See, it's just a matter of just playing around, but what is important for sure is just making sure that um, your your changes are subtle, okay? That it's not too too hard and all that type of stuff. And your selections are just there to help you, you know, create all that detail. And it, it does come eventually. If you keep working at it and you keep, um, you know, your line art low and you keep, like, say, for example, something like that, and you keep looking at where you want your shadows to be or what parts of your things like for example here right this would have shadow 
right? because light is going to cut into that. Uh, here you can play a little bit with the idea that yeah, something's going to cut into the shadow there. Here another one, right? And these are little things that, for example, we can play with, right? We can go back to the letter B. We go, oh yeah, if you want to select the color of the layer itself, that's another thing. Um, when you do a selection, so you can do that here, instead of all layers, go to current layer, right? And you will select the color on this layer. So if I do this, it will select that exact same blue that we have there. Okay, quite important tip. Uh, then you don't have to worry about getting the right color there. So now, if, for example, I'm going to do this, and I go back to my brush, and I do something like this. All right, I go over it here a little bit. See, I've got my selection, and that brush basically does all the rest um, because I still have that selection. Right? See, if I do that, it's right there, and I could add a little bit here, the opacity back to 100, um, and I can add the shadows uh, as I go. Um, and if I need to do that on detailed shadows, I still have them there. Uh, I can see make them darker, uh, or just change the color of certain parts. Like, you know, uh, for example, here it's a little bit too hard, so just lower the opacity a bit, and just you know, here, here, you know. And that's how you continue working on this stuff. Same with the shirt. The shirt itself has actually a lot of like details, so. The shirt would make a lot of sense because it's like bending uh, to play with this idea that, you know, this part is darker. This one, this one, for example, right? You just in here and maybe a little bit of this. Play with the idea that that gets darker. Um, see, you just select a few parts. Go here, go back to the... Um, let's see, let's see. Where are we? We have it here. Yeah, we could actually just work with the shadows, or actually the detailed shadows, which is a little bit darker, right? Make it soft. And go over it again. If the selection is still there, let me check. Yeah, selection is still there. And my opacity is uh, 30, but it still does it. So it's just a few little details. This you can get rid of quite quickly. Right. It's not really a big issue. Um, that's just by making your selection here again, saying background, flip it over. The easier way, of course, is just to using a clipping mask. Um, if you don't ever want anything, or you can also just say, uh, like I said, if you just go to your selection, make your life a whole lot easier. Select the background and say, look, nothing here it goes outside. So that's your, your mask. Now you have a mask, meaning that nothing will go outside of that. It'll just stay there, right? And like this, we um, keep going, right? And you get your your character in there. Um, and, uh, and there we go. So what we can do for this second one, um, for the second style is maybe, uh, see if I can remove the line art uh, from here. Let me quickly make a copy so that at least I have a copy of it. Remove that. And here, just all this stuff. No, I'll, I'll use it like this. This stuff. There we go. Now I'll just do this really quickly and then remove where else needs removing so at least I get some stuff done. Now I'll do this one as well. But not the two. I actually want the two in there. So... Maybe that. Uh, we can do that and then remove. Yeah, remove on the other side. So maybe if I just do this. Up, up. There, it's gone, and here the same. Just really quickly, you know, to provide a preview of what this looks like. There you go. I think more or less we have that art style. And you can see that it really works. I mean, we're nowhere near done. Uh, it takes a little bit more time, but you can get really cool effects like that. And if you keep going, you can get really, really fun uh, little details and stuff like that. And that can be done just by working with all your selections because they're just so useful. These selections are ridiculously useful uh, to work with. Um, just don't forget to, yeah, 
add your line art where necessary, right? Um, and this, in this case, we can just lower it down considerably. We can just take a quick thingy there and just something like that. Something like that. I don't know. Um, so there you go. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll just continue working on this a little bit so you can see um, what else or what it looks like once it's either finished or almost finished. Let's do that. Very quickly, we're gonna have a very quick look at what exactly happened, right? So, because a lot of stuff happened in the meantime, I've reopened Photoshop. Now it's running on my MacBook instead of my iMac. Um, so, what we have here, everything that's taken care of here is, um, I'll quickly just go over the things, right? So we've got, let's see, painting style, lighting, let's close this. We've got some adjustment layers. Uh, so these were all the selections. As you've noticed, all these additional selections like background, character, uh, beard, all that stuff, I've added additional clipping masks for every single one of them. Okay, so for example, for the skin, right, so I've got stuff like uh, skin shadows, right? Uh, I've got skin lighting. Uh, this one I've turned off, might actually keep it on, looks better. Uh, so the skin blush, 
and uh, you've got the same for like the beard, right? So the shadows for the beard, the lighting for the beard. Uh, this is all so that they would stay inside the selections, right? So inside the beard selection that they would stay inside. Uh, and the same with the hair, right? I want everything to stay within the hair and so forth and so forth. That's why I use all these clipping masks. Could have used masks as well, traditional masks. Uh, anything would have gone. But, you know, just to speed things up for myself a little bit, I just use clipping masks everywhere. So it was quite useful to do. Uh, and then, again, this you can keep going, okay? You can keep going forever and ever. Uh, like I said, I mean, here, for example, with the hair, uh, there's still a few shadows that I would, like, ideally, if in, in, a, in a perfect world, right, uh, I would like to ideally add, let's say, let's say, because I'm on a different computer now, uh, like if I wanted to, whoops, that's way too hard, uh, put it to maybe two or something, but yeah, like, you know, stuff like here a little bit, which, no, let's do this one, all right, add a little bit of that in here, uh, maybe put it to four, all right, so just some of these places where I know, like, shadow would be a little bit more, um, right, like I said, it was not perfectly in, uh, finished, but, you know, just the most important thing is that, you know, the, the, the whole work is there and that you ex understand how it was done, right? Use the exact same techniques that you've seen before at the beginning of the video. So nothing new there. So we're, I'm just going to skip all this. This should all be pretty uh, self-explanatory. Then we've got additional um, layers, the shadows, the detailed shadows you had already seen. The cigarette light is just some light on the cigarette with a lighten effect on it. Uh, VR lights are just some uh, VR lights with some effects on them, right, so that they provided additional effects. You have got some smoke, which is also on a normal, uh, with a, like a special brush for that. Uh, then the lighting, yeah, I added additional lighting towards the end uh, with a mask, so I masked out the character and then added some lighting on a color dodge, uh, some blue lighting, some cold lighting I wanted to do this time. Uh, because it worked really well with the uh, character itself, right? So that explains that. And then these two are quite important because they make big of a difference, right? If I remove it, that's what you see, right? So one, I did a color overlay, so I made a mask of the square, uh, of the background square. Then I just added the green color over it. That's all I did. I just grabbed the color, put it in overlay. You can play around with this, obviously, to see which one you like the most. Uh, me personally, I mean, you can go for a color, but that washes things out a little bit. So I kind of like the overlay. Uh, could maybe play with hard light a little bit, vivid light, if you really want the colors to be vivid. Um, but I'm going to stick with overlay, kind of like it. And then another one that is quite important is the levels, right? So this is an adjustment layer. Adjustment layers you can get right from here, right? So at the bottom, and then here you've got all kinds of adjustment layers that you can do, like to adjust your levels, your brightness contrast, your color balance. So the same stuff that we've been doing, like control U for this one, the hue, saturation, and values, uh, control B for color balance and all these things, you can get them here when you want to make adjustments to all the layers below. And so I've done that for levels, right? So that's the one I chose here. And then uh, when I turn them on, basically what it does, it adjusts the levels uh, to a much uh, better and cleaner um, version than what it was before. Right, you can see that right here. So now it's at 26. See when I do this, uh, it changes all these things. So I'm just gonna put it back to where it was, 26. Right, and the same with the highlights and all that stuff. So that you can do there, strong recommendation. And another thing that I always uh, was doing the whole time uh, was uh, going between black and whites. Now I've got this set up uh, in a you know with a shortcut key which for me is uh, control uh, Y um, control Y or command Y what it does is it basically sets up your if you look here right your mask game dot eight that's a setup that I have right it's in view uh, I did this once where was it it was uh, what was it proof setup no I don't remember somewhere here I set it up um, I'll look it up somewhere but basically what it is it basically just very quickly allows you to, if I were to do it now, yeah, there you go. So it's basically proof colors, uh, and you can set that up somewhere. Uh, if you do a custom, I think here, yeah, what I did is I turned it to a custom, and then dot 20, dot gain 20, 
and then when you press Control Y, you can very quickly check your um, black and whites basically. Normally it's set to something else. Alternatively, you can always just make a layer at the top, bring it to color, fill it in with black. It's the same thing, right? And then you just, it's like a color checker, right? You could do that, uh, or value checker. I'll, I'll add it to it just in case. Value checker, and then you've seen it. And there we go, right? So uh, that's it. That's basically what was done on the second part. Um, again, you can keep going like for all eternity and, and keep cleaning it up and making it better and better. Um, you know, and again, if you want to replace the line art, because that's the important part here, right? If you see, if I add lines, then it kind of looks a little bit like um, Borderlands, the video game. Okay, at least that's what it reminds me of, uh, which can also be really cool. I mean, if that's the art style that you're going for, well, then there you go. That's how you do it. It's very simple. Um, but if you don't have these lines, right, then everything that is no longer visible in the lines, then you're going to have to add uh, through your um, painting, basically, right, through, through your colors. So very quickly, VR lighting, for example. It's a very simple thing, but, and, you know, the, the lines, they, um, like, for example, stuff like here, right? If you were to add very thin lines here, that's basically what dictates um, that specific line. And you keep going and going, and you make uh, changes in values when the shape uh, of your uh, item changes. Right, and that's how you get the lines in. Like here, for example, if you wanted a very thin um, like outline, you could also go with this line very thin. Like I'll, I'll zoom in because this will be almost impossible to see otherwise. Um, so you do this, and you basically uh, go over it everywhere where you know there there is a, a ridge, basically, right? And you keep doing that here and here, and that takes a long time. Okay, so you could do that forever until you get all these cool little ridges everywhere and here you know where basically you're, you're painting at this point right you're just like adding thingies and here you do the same and so that it looks like it was dented in right so that's how you get all these cool effects in there and like i said you can keep going and going and going as you can see i mean this was very quickly done uh just to provide you some form of information or how to do it uh, and on the stuff like the lighting here, like I said, I could keep going and going forever. Which one was it? This one, right? Uh, this one, for example, um, yeah, I can keep correcting things uh, all the time, but that's that would you know that would make this video very long, and that's why I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to fix this tiny little bit here, right, and maybe a little bit softer on this end and here, right, something like that. And then maybe here as well, right, to create a little bit of soft parts here and there. I don't want it to be too strong. Right, okay. So I'm going to leave it at that. And we're going to move on to the third art style, which is um, basically the same as the second. But this time, instead of all these million layers, I'm just going to use one or two or maybe three tops. The reason for this is very simple. It's actually the art style that I like to work with the most because it's very fast. It's a whole lot faster than doing this. This second style is useful if you want full control over everything and you're still, you know, you're still learning to paint and you're not really sure, you know, what works, what doesn't, then it's always good to have a backup like this where you have like all these million layers and, you know, you can, you can always go back to any part of the layer and just modify the color of the jacket or this and that. So that's what that's very useful for. Um, okay, so for this next part, uh, let's see. I've already taken the liberty of making myself uh, a um, a new group, right? So a new group in the layer, like a folder. And inside there, I've already made a selection um, to win time, right? So a quick selection with the lasso tool. Again, this selection is not, it has uh, no... Um, I mean, it has anti-aliasing on it, so you will have, see, it's not pixelated. I mean, it's pixelated, but not like 
hard edges. You've got soft edges, which is exactly what you want in this particular uh, style. Um, the only one where you don't want that is in number one, where you're doing it like a comic book, so that because all your selections are on one and the same layer, right? Which is the, the amazing part here, because you don't really need much, you know, you don't need much uh, layers to get this one done. Your flats here, it's just all one layer. This one layer here, all your colors are on there, which is amazing. Right. So um, let's start digging into character number three and let's have a look at how this um, last part is done. So this one should normally go quite fast. So uh, I'll just uh, speed this up and explain everything afterwards. Okay, so there we are. We have the three different art styles. Uh, I'll quickly explain what the last one um, is or what happened. Uh, so basically everything or a lot of it is basically on just a few layers, not that much. And I have quite some modification layers afterwards that I wanted to modify the colors a little bit better, which is what you were seeing towards the end. Uh, but basically, um, if I just remove everything, let's maybe just do that. Right, so we start off with a painting layer, okay, so just the basic painting, uh, but as you see, the, there's still a lot of imbalances here. Uh, so I added some shadows, uh, some more shadows to get that real strong contrast in there, some lights on the other side, same technique, okay, so it's with the selection with the lasso tool and then uh, with gradients, for example, going over it uh, or with a soft brush. Uh, then uh, I added some additional light. I like this cold light on the right side. I, it creates a nice little flow. Um, this was just to uh, change the colors a little bit. I didn't name it at the end, but it's like a color overlay. Could also remove it. Um, then there is a the skin mod, obviously, which was there already. Uh, this was done with an overlay, a simple overlay and a simple color. Uh, the white boxes are basically where my name is, the logo and the number three and a final levels adjustment here. Uh, it's an adjustment layer just to get the, um, you know, when you look at here, just to get these values a little bit more um, to what I wanted them to be, you know, to really get all the darks out. Um, you could technically even leave it here if you want it to be a little bit more washed out. If I were to make this smaller, uh, I could technically, I could actually just leave it like that if I wanted to. I like to verify when the image is small, right? Because if it works as a small image, which is important for painting, um, then it's always a little bit easier to uh, make it work in general. But what you can also do, sometimes this works quite well, is you make, um, let's see, no, not here. Uh, I think when I'll try just to do this, right? I'll do this. Uh, but it's not going to work. I think it's only going to work on, if I were to go to the painting, sometimes if you do a adjustment and you do a auto contrast, auto color, that type of stuff, it will try to improve as much as it can, right? So for example here, and then auto tone. So we go from this to that. Sometimes it can improve, sometimes not. You know, Photoshop is quite smart in that sometimes, right? This was before, this is after. Yeah, it, it does pop out a little bit more, uh, but don't forget that's only on the painting layer, right? So when we remove that, uh, these are the, the sites that we have for the lighting on one side, the shading on the other. Um, 
and then we've got the painting right here. So again, this is these are choices that you make. Either you go with this, uh, which is a little bit darker, or you go with that. You know, I prefer me personally. I prefer to have a little bit more control over it. So instead of doing the auto ones, I'll leave it at this for now. Um, and maybe instead just toning this down a little bit this way to make it a little bit lighter, right? Because that would work. Um, that would basically get the same effect. Right? So this and this, and then we've got something quite nice. All right, well, that's it. Um, I think we've got our three styles here. Um, there's always more stuff that you can keep on doing. Like, for example, if I really wanted to, um, yeah, just keep this a little bit clean inside the logo box. Right, that's it. Right, just like that. Um, and the same on the other side, right? Just to remove the white where it shouldn't be. Put it like this. And then that's it, right? Okay, that's all I got. And so there you have it, everyone. That is my long, long tutorial on uh, these videos. I hope that you liked it. As usual, uh, you can always leave a like and subscribe. And I guess I will be seeing you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.